the acute problem here in the United States is that we have still 57 million Americans who, who don't have any savings or any retirement plan. The baby boomers are facing a major retirement crisis. I know a lot of millennials and Gen Z like to talk about how rich the boomers are and how they're withholding money from us, but a lot of boomers are broker than you think, which means it's going to be millennials and potentially Gen Z's problem to take care of them as they age. Welcome back to my show, Hannah Explains It All, where every week I'm helping you better understand the things that are being done to you by your politicians. This week I'm joining you from a last minute trip to Harry Potter World down in Universal Studios, so I've added a little owl decor. This week, we have to talk about the fact that your boomer parents are getting ready to retire and they are in no way ready to do so. According to reporting from the NASDAQ, 43% of 55 to 64 year olds had no retirement savings at all in 2022, according to the Federal Reserve Board. The National Council on Aging estimated 17 million people over 65 are considered economically in secure. So as boomers are rapidly approaching the age at which many of them are expecting to retire, it's becoming increasingly clear that this is going to be one last F you they leave us in the economy. Disclaimer, before anybody comes for me, I have boomer parents who I love who have saved for retirement, who have done the right thing. But as a whole, I think boomers are one of the most reckless, irresponsible and selfish generations this country has ever seen. And we have been paying for their choices, both politically socially and economically for decades. And now this, you have one of the largest generations in history getting ready to retire and they've done nothing to prepare themselves to do so. Well, some of them have, but it seems a lot of them have not. And what that means is that the burden is going to fall on us, as in their kids and their grandkids, and on us, as in society at large, taxpayers, everybody else who's going to have to pick up the bill. Not planning for retirement is simply inexcusable. It is one of the most selfish things I can think of. And I know this because I have made it very clear that I don't intend to have kids. A lot of people have kids purely so that they have someone to take care of them in old age. And this is one of the things that drives me the most nuts, is that people will literally say it's selfish for me to not have kids, and in the same breath say, they are having kids so that somebody has to take care of them when they're old and haven't done their job to prepare for themselves. Like, be so serious. Who's actually selfish in this equation? Let's talk about dwindling boomer retirement funds. The average retiring baby boomer, according to the Exit Planning Institute, has only $202,000 in their retirement fund. Not only have a significant portion of the boomer population not saved anything for retirement, but of the 57% that apparently have saved something, the median retirement savings is $202,000. $202,000. That's not enough to live for even five years, much less 10 more years, which is about what you would expect to see from somebody retiring at age 67 based on general life expectancy. On top of that, when you consider how boomers have been living leading up to this, there's no way they're going to start living within their means just because they get old and retire. So yeah, a lot of people's kids are about to have to start providing for their parents even as people are struggling to just meet the basic cost of living these days thanks to inflation. Even as people are not having kids right now because they can't afford basic childcare. And even if you do have parents who've done the right thing like I have, who have lived responsibly, who live within their means, who have worked extra jobs, who have saved responsibly, Responsibly, I'm still going to have to pick up the tab for all of these boomers who didn't because I have to pay taxes and because we have a massive nanny state government that insists we pay for people who make poor choices. Now, boomers are a very large generation. Obviously, some of them have already retired, some are approaching retirement, and some still have a ways to go. But we are already starting to see a phenomenon of people having to move in with their kids. I'm an only child of boomers who did not save for retirement and now they can no longer sustain the life that they've lived for 50 plus years and are now being forced to move in with me across the country. And one of the things that I'm processing right now is I lived so much of my young adult life without any money. Um, my parents don't approve of my lifestyle. I'm gay. My partner and I just bought our first house together in um, the spring last year. We haven't even lived in the house a full year. And it's really hard for me to navigate the space where I feel like I'm the only person that can help them and that is going to help them. But at the same time, where were they when I needed help? When I was in college and didn't have any money and no support for, um, you know, through that whole process. And so now I'm in my late 30s. My parents are in their early 70s and we're being faced with these big life changes and I, I feel like I literally have no option. 
So um, if you're somebody that's had this experience and has navigated this situation, I'd really love to hear some of your ideas or thoughts or experiences because uh, we're just at the very beginning stages of this. Um, so I don't really have any idea what we're doing <laughs> just yet. Uh, so anyways, thanks for listening and thanks for your advice. That video was rough to watch and people had a lot of feelings in the comments, many of which I shared. And I think you could summarize most of their advice that they left for her as tell them to get screwed. One person said, I just wouldn't do it to be honest with you. You were better than me. I agree, especially considering the fact that she says she is gay and that they have not been approving of her relationship. Like you wouldn't be coming to live with me and my partner then. Another person says, they could always pull themselves up by their bootstraps. You owe them nothing. They owe you everything. Stick to your boundaries. Now, I do feel a sense of duty to take care of my parents, but that's largely because my parents have always taken very good care of me. Too many people have kids, and I covered this on an episode of Histrionics recently titled, I'm not having kids, so sue me but many people have kids for very, very selfish reasons and they don't even do a good job once they're here. You have a responsibility to your kids to provide for them, to take care of them, to ensure they have the things they need to be successful and move forward in life. They do not have the same obligation to you. Now, if you do a good job, they will probably feel goodwill towards you and want to do right by you, but you're not entitled to it. Furthermore, the fact that boomers have had such a condescending attitude towards millennials and Gen Z people for quite some time now makes it really hard to have sympathy for them. These are the same people that said, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps or said, stop eating an avocado toast. As literally, we were just trying to deal with the hot mess of an economy that they created for us. And then they're gonna have the audacity to not even prepare for their own retirements. The cognitive dissonance is wild with these people. Another person says they're only going to continue to disrespect you and bleed you dry, live your life. Hard to argue otherwise. I just, I don't know. I can't imagine like the sense of shame my father would feel if he had not prepared for him. I mean, my dad won't let me pick up a tab at a restaurant. I can't fathom him being willing to come like let me support him unless he just I, I I can't fathom it. I take it back. There's there's no line. There it would never exist. I don't understand the mentality of parents who don't provide for themselves, who don't plan for themselves, and who then are fine living off their kids, who are, again, already struggling to live much of the time in this country thanks to the political decisions of boomers and other people. But boomers have been in power and are in most seats of government right now, so they bear more of the blame at the moment. Another person says, do not move them in. One says, you don't owe them anything. If they do not respect you and your lifestyle, it's probably not going to go well. Good luck, friend. Yeah, I can't imagine how that's going to go. Are they going to be respectful of your lifestyle all of a sudden because they're dependent on you? Probably not because they're entitled. Another person said, check for income-driven senior living communities around you. If you have to move them in, set boundaries and let it be known. It's honestly hard to disagree with most of these, especially in her circumstances. Not everyone has good parents. Not everyone had healthy parents. You and I may feel a sense of duty to take care of our parents, and I do, like I said, but to say that everyone feels that way or should feel that way, I just think is incorrect. I did notice that a lot of people in the comments were telling her to check into senior assisted living facilities, especially government-sponsored ones. And to be honest, I get that sentiment, but it's not really a good bet. Nursing homes are already vastly overcrowded, as we'll get to in a minute, especially the ones that are dependent on government welfare. And that's because government welfare doesn't really pay a market rate. There's no incentive for it to really be widely available. And government mismanages everything. So there's no reason to think government's just going to start building all these retirement homes and take care of your parents for you. It's not. Your taxes will go up and they will keep going up as they keep expanding the nanny state to take care of people who make poor choices like this. But it's never going to be quality care and there's never going to be enough of it. And ultimately, all this means is that society is going to pay a price for boomers being irresponsible. Many of the programs they are about to go on to, like Medicare, like Social Security, are going broke. They've already been mismanaged. They already are going under because, again, they lack basic market incentives you need for operation to continue. And lastly, because we are not reproducing enough people to keep them going. They've always been built like a Ponzi scheme where you have to have a larger base at the bottom to pay for a slowly dying base at the top. And as people are living longer and having fewer kids, that pyramid is no longer working. So when you hear people say that we need to expand Medicare and Medicaid, they're crazy. It's going bust. All that's going to happen is that nobody will be able to get care and the price will just keep going up. I could go on a whole rant about government health care, and I have, so I'll add a few cards here if you want to check out other episodes to keep myself on track. But just to back myself up here on the facts, this is also from the NASDAQ. They write, the prediction for social safety nets like Social Security and Medicare has remained consistent. 
Essentially, the funds may last only a little while longer, not to mention that the original intent of Social Security was to supplement retirees, not totally replace individuals' responsibility to save for retirement. However, that's largely where we are today. A 2022 Social Security Trustees report predicted the exhaustion of the trust fund by the year 2034. A 2019 Medicare report anticipated its hospital insurance trust funds will be exhausted by 2026. A significant contributing factor to this phenomenon is the declining birth rate, which means fewer workers are paying into these trust funds. This ultimately affects the amount of money available for beneficiaries. So to summarize so far, boomers have not saved and planned for retirement. Their kids are going to be expected to pick up the expense. There's not a ton of government options you can depend on. And lastly, another major thing you should be aware of is that you can be asked to pick up your parents' medical debt. No, not asked. That's wrong. Mandated. You can be mandated to pick up your parents' medical debt when all of this is said and done. There is a very, very good chance that you will not be able to fully physically care for your parents throughout their elderly years and death. That's due to both physical restraints. It's also due to time restraints. People still have to work jobs. Many people are going to be in situations where they have to provide child care for their own kids and are also expected to look after their elderly parents, something they call the sandwich generation. There is an existing shortage of nursing homes, and on top of all of that, they are in no way prepared to pay for those retirement homes, and so they're probably going to go into debt, and again, that debt can get pushed onto you. Let's look at the numbers. Yet again, going off reporting from the NASDAQ here. The 4% rule is a general guideline recommending an annual withdrawal rate for retirees so that retirement savings can last at least 30 years. If American households between the ages of 55 and 64 are spending $78,000 each year, retirement savings would need at least an aggregate value of about $2 million to keep up with this level of annual spending and retirement, a far stretch from the average $200,000 in savings for this aging demographic. For those who live far beyond age 64, long-term care costs could utterly eclipse this $78,000 figure with at least two elderly household members requiring living assistance. A study by Jim Worth reported the average monthly cost of an assisted living facility is now $4,500, while the monthly cost for homemaker services and home health aid are $4,957 and $5,140, respectively. Furthermore, a report by the Teachers Insurance and Annuity Association of America and the University of Pennsylvania School of Nursing revealed one in five adults now provide uncompensated care to loved ones with health problems. The report explained that many caregivers cover expenses out of their own savings. On average, the caregivers' uncompensated expenses, things like housing, health care, and transportation, add up to more than $7,000 a year. So you're paying in more ways than one. And in 30 states, they have something called filial responsibility laws that mandate you pick up the cost of your parents' Healthcare. If they have medical debt, even death from dying, it can be passed on to you. Now, the laws differ between states. Some of them enforce them heavily, like Pennsylvania. Others have them on the books, but don't really enforce them that heavily. But in only eight of the 30 statutes are provisions that the child's liability will be waived if the parent did not provide support for the child while minor. So even if your parents are strayed from you, even if they ditched you in childhood, even if you they were totally absent, had nothing to do with your child rearing, you could still be forced to pick up their medical and debt death in many of these states, which is completely crazy. Furthermore, as nursing homes continue to fill up, as these government programs get further and further stretched, I'm willing to bet that a lot of these states will start to more strictly enforce that because somebody's got to pick up the tab. There are also other ways that you can be roped into paying for your parents' care. One common ruse is called the responsibility party. You'll often find in nursing home contracts. Some of those admission agreements basically define responsible party as being responsible for any debt they incur while staying there. For the record, nursing homes are prohibited by federal and state law from requiring a third party guarantee of payment for expedited admission or continued stay but they are not prohibited from allowing someone to voluntarily assume financial responsibility, which is what you're doing if you sign a contract that has this kind of clause in it. What all of this should tell you is that it's time to have some tough conversations. Have you guys seen the person whose broke boomer parents are moving back in with them and they're sort of video journaling about it? This person has a really tumultuous relationship with their parents, um, but their parents can't can't live on their own anymore. They can't afford it anymore. So this person's allowing their parents to come stay with them. First, let this serve as a reminder to have these conversations before it's time. Um, super uncomfortable to have, but it's better to, you know, decide it up front than when somebody's in distress. This is a conversation that I've had with my siblings and my parents. And the way I approached it was at like Thanksgiving or a holiday dinner. I just said, hey, you guys are getting old. Let's talk about what's going to happen when you can't live independently anymore. Now I realize that approach may not work in every household and every dynamic, but that's just what I did. 
But another thing that this reminded me of, and this is going to be like millennials and above, but do you guys remember during the Great Recession, there used to be commercials about elderly people moving in with their kids because the economy was so bad and the recession hit them so hard that they literally could not afford to live. Recessions tend to hit older people really, really hard. So my recommendation would be to just try to keep a bead on what's going on with the older people in your life who may call you one day and say, hey, we're losing our house and we have nowhere to stay. Can we come live with you? Just try to keep a thumb on that situation. I know it's uncomfortable to talk to your parents about what their plan is for retirement and for death, but it is absolutely necessary. If you don't do so, it's very likely you're going to be the one stuck with the tab, and that's something that you need to be aware of and on guard against. All right, guys, I hope you liked this episode. Leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week. If you like this episode, don't forget to check out others in my series, Hannah Explains It All, here, and you can watch my other show, Histrionics, here.